Bradford, a team that placed fourth this season in the Big South against the second place Catamounts, at least in the regular season in the America East. Bradford wearing the bright red road uniforms. Vermont, the bright gold homes tonight at Patrick Gym in the quarterfinals of the CBI. O'Day versus Holcomb, and O'Day wins the tip for Vermont. Catamounts from left to right per usual in the first half here at home. O'Day the screen set for Bell Haynes, who penetrates middle, has his pocket picked. Taken away, going end to end. Green skying, swooping in, and the scoop shot is good. The lay in for Javante Green. And the senior has advertising, making a steal going the distance and getting the layup. 1.8 steals per game, the defensive player of the year in the Big South. Against the Radford zone, O'Day lefty hook down low is good. Uh, middle was wide open, they found O'Day right against Holcomb, put his body right into him so Holcomb couldn't go up to contest that and got the layup with the left hand. A potential matchup advantage to be had, Vermont's bigs against what Radford has to offer down low. Green lob pass over the top, caught by Holcomb, up fake, gets O'Day in the air and lays it in. Little high low right there, Green finding Holcomb for the easy layup as O'Day tried to uh, Tried to front and to no avail. Hector Harrell left wings. Gives the pass up top for Bell Haynes. Circles back to the left on the America East logo, high above the hoop. To O'Day right baseline, penetrates middle. Turns over his left shoulder, back the other way, laying good. Four quick ones for O'Day. That's a great move by O'Day, just the isolated one-on-one -on -one from the wing. Took him to the middle, reverse pivot for the layup in the right hand. We're tied at four, but Green has a post up and a quick bucket down low left block. Well, 30 second shot clock hasn't been much of a difference factor here uh, as that was an easy play in transition for Radford to get Green that layup. For the second straight game, Vermont playing an opponent that loves to play quick, plus the 30 second shot clock in the CBI equals a faster pace than usual. Six to four, Radford. Baseline drive, Wills. Hang, dish, Steidel open, right wing three. Too short, he thought it was going down. Off the front rim, rebound for the Highlanders. Quick toss up the court, green shot block down low. He's a bull underneath, gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Just a man amongst boys right there, just throwing his body around, getting his shot blocked, going back in the second play and getting the hoop to go. Wills penetrates right, misses the lay-in too short. Rebound Radford, eight to four lead. Quick fire for Price, left wing for three. No good, rebound O'Day. And that's what Radford likes to do, quick three in transition by Price. Thankfully, only one and out. Last couple games for UVM, Bernie played at the, the NBA pace. Yeah, it's fun to watch, up and down. Gotta love it, O'Day goes middle, lefty hook shot, crawls up on the rim and drops for Ethan O'Day. Just like an NBA game, a little isolation right there. Ethan going to his left hand again for another layup in the middle. You might not see this Radford run and jump press in the NBA, that's probably the biggest thing you wouldn't see in the NBA, but Vermont down by two, nearly three minutes gone by, eight to six. Kyle Noreen guarded by Steidel left wing. The pass goes to the top of the key. Anderson feeds the post. Holcomb mid post right, backing down O'Day. Size advantage, but Holcomb misses the lefty hook, and O'Day bear hugs the board. I love the fact that they're letting them play. Bodies just you know knocking each other around, just uh, being able to go after it, which is nice to see. They iso O'Day again. This time misses a lay in left side short. Took it right to the rim and missed it. Outlet feed. Is too far out of the reach of Noreen, but Steidel tipped it. So on the baseline underneath the UVM hoop, it'll be Radford inbounds. Brandon Hatton into the game for Kurt Steidel. Zach Nick Roberts, the quick check in for Hector Harold, who's been dealing with the flu the last couple days. Drew Urquhart now comes in for O'Day. Yeah, and, and poor Heck just looks like he's. Uh He's just struggling right there. He doesn't have that same type of energy and emotion, just trying to conserve it, but uh, really struggling. They get the quick trigger off the inbounds pass. Noreen wide open, laying, got it. Yeah, just a simple little uh, double curl as, as uh, Noreen went around a couple of screens and got a layup. 10-6, to six, Radford controls early on here in Patrick Jim. Bell Haynes being pressured by Price, circles oh. towards the right wing. Picks up the dribble, feeds Wills up top, drives left, double team. He picks it up, struggling, and finally bounces out to Urquhart. Wills takes it back. Eight to shoot now. Urquhart, the high screen. They hedge on Wills. Loses the ball. Gets it. Gives Bell Haynes with two. Top of the key. Awkward push shot. Long two. Rattles home. Little step back. Long two, like you said. His foot was right there as the shot clock was about to expire. Ten to eight. Vermont down by two, but awkward offensively early on. A blocking foul called against Urquhart with Green diving in down low in the left. 
Yeah, right there, little screen and roll. Urquhart ro rotated, was there. Contact, that contact has been happening the whole game. Green lost it, but I guess he got fouled first. In a fast-paced first four minutes and five seconds, that is the first foul on either team. That going against Urquhart right there. The foul will give the ball back to Radford. After we return, the score, Vermont trailing Radford 10 to eight after about four minutes inside of Patrick Gym. This is UBM basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. Back here in Patrick Jim alongside Bernie Saplicki, A.J. Cannell, the quarterfinals of the College Basketball Invitational, a 16-team national tournament behind the NIT, probably in front of the CIT in terms of status. Vermont down by two against Radford. Left wing three triggered by Anderson, no good. And what a play to go up high for the putback that time. Was that green? Yes. Going up with a monster jam, like a slam ball play almost. Stuffed it down. It popped out of the hoop, but an offensive goal ten anyway. Yeah, dude, where, what helicopter did he just get dropped <laughs> out of? Oh my goodness! Who installed the trampoline wow. in the paint? But it doesn't count. Basket interference offensively. So UBM ball, 15-35 in the opening half, down 10 to eight against Radford, right side of the court. Ward pull up, top of the key. And after McRoberts set the screen, there was a foul against Radford's Rashawn Davis. His first personal, the first on Radford. Yeah, a little screen and roll right there with Ward and McRoberts on the side, and Davis got uh, tangled up. Did a little extra clutching and grabbing and got called for that foul. Ward looking to trigger in from the left baseline. Finds Hatton left wing. Handoff back to Cam. Urquhart the screen and slip. Ward finds him down low left. He's guarded by Carruthers. Righty hook shot up the back rim and finds the roll after several bounces on the rim. And Drew Urquhart really coming on strong at the end of the season offensively. Quickly the other way, Jones goes up left block, misses it. Rebound UVM, Wills penetration from the right wing, in in, reach around pass is deflected out of bounce off of UVM, or off of uh, Radford, stay UVM ball. Yeah, right there, Catamounts just again, Getting back in transition, little backdoor cut that uh, there was some weak side help and a block for, uh, for, for Dre Wills right there. And then in transition, getting to the rim, but the ball deflected out of bounds. Or drop down Urquhart, left block, reverse lane attempt, no good. Rebound for the Highlanders. It's 10 to 10 after five minutes played in the first half. And it's the CBI quarters here in Patrick Gym. Cross court feed caught by Davis. Swing to the post. Carruthers with the hook shot from straight away. No good off to the left. Vermont the ball. Bellhaines motors end to end. His shot is blocked up high, but a goaltender is called. Yeah, that's an easy call right there as Trey Bellhaines goes all the way to the rim, lays it up. Carruthers just came from behind, swatted it right in front of the rim as it was on its way down. Easy goaltend call. Catamounts take a 12-10 lead. First lead of the game for UVM, 12-10. Drop down for Dyer down low. He gets fouled rising up. Lucas Dyer, the redshirt sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, off the bounce speed, a good catch. Went up strong, drew the foul on Vermont. And the first on Brandon Hatton looking to provide help. Yeah, Coach Becker just asking on Drew Urquhart's little reverse layup. 
there could have been some contact, the same amount of contact as there was right here with Hatton. So just uh, looking for a little bit of consistency. Dyer pretty consistent at the foul line. He's 15 of 19 on the season now after making the first. Not a lot of opportunities, but catches in on two tries there. And this game is once again tied at 12. Once again, Radford showing their press look with their head coach, Mike Jones, the former VCU assistant. And you know that VCU likes to create havoc under Shaka Smart. Now, some havoc created there, a turnover off of McRoberts' pass. Bounce feed back to Dyer, two-hand, tomahawk jam on the right block. And timeout, John Becker. Yeah, right there again. Good defense leading the easy offense. The pressure on, out top, just uh, taking Vermont out of their comfort zone, getting a steal, getting a dunk in transition, forcing Vermont to take a 30-second timeout. 14.04 left in the opening half, 14 to 12. Radford over UVM, but yeah, that's what you get out of this Radford team, Bernie. I mean, you, you don't even have to look at the scouting report. You know, as soon as you look at the bio, you see Mike Jones, who went to the Final Four as an assistant under Shaka Smart with VCU in their 2011 run. Following that stint at VCU, he took the head coaching job at Radford, has rebuilt this team. You know if you see a guy coming from VCU, his team is going to press, and that's what Radford does with their run and jump press. Takes on some similarities to VCU. Yes, yeah, just very, very strong, very athletic guards, uh, really picking up the pressure. Not so much trapping, just, just a nuisance in terms of ball pressure and, and just trying to take you out of your comfort zone. They do a very good job of it here. Bell Haynes penetrate left paint, reach around feed is not hauled in by Urquhart, looks to save it, but gives it right to Radford. Pull up jumper by Davis in transition. No good from the foul line, rebound to UVM. Push to Hatton, one on one in transition. His shot is blocked by Carruthers down low, but the offensive rebound, the putback and the foul for Urquhart. Give the assist to Carruthers there, man, because uh, <laughs> Brandon Hatton tried to go right to the rim, went strong, Carruthers trailed the play, just uh, kind of pinned it against the board, but hit it so hard and went right to Urquhart, who was doing a good job hustling and trailing. Gets the ball, goes up, lays it in. Now gets to go to the line for the three-point play. You could say Carruthers had Hatton saying, oh, brother. Yes, you, you, you could have. Foul right there is the first on Jones, and Urquhart cashes in. So he has five points after 10 on four of six shooting last time out for a guy who only averages three per game this season. He's been scoring the ball better recently, and Coach Becker made it a priority to get those younger guys, especially the reserve bigs, into these CBI games. Vermont takes the lead back 15 to 14. They send a trap high above against Davis. Three ball by Jones, right wing is too strong. Weak side rebound for Ward. Here comes Vermont, left to right, up by one, midway through the first half in the CBI against Radford. A deflection caused up top by Price. Goes out of bounds, last touch by Bell Haynes. Another turnover. Yeah, tough one right there again. The, the, the pressure is just so, so much. And, you know, for, I'm sure, the people who are out there, if they're watching us on the, on the live stream, you know, just can't really see how much this pressure is bothering Vermont on the perimeter. Like, it, it, is that, it is that good. Or if you're listening on the radio, you also couldn't yeah, see it. that's very, very true as well. The fourth Vermont turnover, none so far for Radford. Oh, oh what a slam! That time by Green, rising up the right side and slamming it down, full extension with his right arm. Wow. Wow, that was the most athletic move we've seen all season. He is a human pogo stick with arms. Foul called on the other end, but who cares? The second foul on Rashawn Davis. So that does matter, brings him to the bench, the important reserve guard for Radford. But my gracious, as Vern Lundquist said a couple times this weekend, lob pass. Bell Haynes looking for Urquhart, or O'Day down low, it's deflected, picked off by Radford. In transition, layup, no good. Missed that time by the Highlanders. Rebound, UVM. Wills the other way towards the paint. They're digging at him from behind, but he maintains control. Steidel drives block. in right side into contact, and a blocking foul is called with Steidel going for the finger roll. 
That's a good move right there by Steidel. And, and, you know, really started getting back in transition and getting that rebound. He fell to the ground, hustled back, got the trailer. They went out to play him, shot fake, went to the rim, gets the block, goes to the line for two. Jalen Carruthers with his first personal foul, the fourth on Radford. Steidel hits the first. He's Vermont's best foul shooter at 82%. I'm just still thinking about that dunk. Yeah, that was. Oh, my God. That might be number one that I've seen in person ever. That, that could be a top 10. That was, that was, that was nasty. That was vicious. Like he caught, he got it at the, the top of the key, shot fake, took a dribble, cocked it back and like was leaning back and then just threw it home. Yeah, but is Vermont gonna send that video to Sports Center? Why not? <laughs> I guess Radford better send that tape once they get it after the game. Hey, maybe respect paid for UVM there. Steidel hits them both. Vermont takes the lead back 17 to 16. Left post, Carruthers posting up O'Day, kick out back to Price, guarded by Steidel, left wing. To the man who slammed it home, Green, top of the key. Now back to Carruthers, mid post, left spin towards the middle. He shot as an air ball, rebound UVM. Transition chance, Wills kick out Bell Haynes. Up big drive, kick for McRoberts, held up on the left elbow, and gives it back out for Bell Haynes. 18 to shoot, the 30 second shot clock has not been much of a factor so far in this game. Bell Haynes looking to drop it for Mick Roberts. Pass deflected, it's loose, and a tie up down low. And the possession arrow will favor UVM after the timeout. Will favor Radford after the timeout, rather. So a timeout on the floor. 17 to 16, Vermont on top of Radford with a media timeout in the first half. This is UVM basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. Now my uncle is watching the I know the students were on spring break, but there was nobody there. There was more Vermont people there than Boston people, and it, it was great. So, you know, anytime you host something like this, uh, you, you want it to be, you know, a, a nice atmosphere, and that's what it is here this evening. Looking to post up, Keon Brown down low left. He goes up with the left hand, blocked from behind by Wills, going up against the tall six foot seven kid from Richmond, Virginia. The guard, Wills, gets the block. Vermont with the ball. Great help from behind the weak side by Dre right there. Bell Haynes goes right through the middle of the defense, laying good off the window. Great move by Trey, but quickly Radford comes back. Trey already has eight. A fadeaway fling shot that time by Owens. Five foot nine guard, no good off the back rim. Vermont with the ball. 19 to 16, Catamounts. 10-49 in the first half. Bell Haynes. Extended right wing to Stottle on the arc right. Now to O'Day, mid post right side. King down Brown, over the left shoulder, pushes it up and in. It's a nice move by Ethan O'Day right there. His eighth point on four or five shooting and three rebounds. Not even 10 minutes in. O'Day and Bell Haynes have a combined 16 points for UVM. 
Familiar formula for victory for the Catamounts. A wild shot down low that time by Jones. Rebound UVM. Wills in transition. Drive and kick to Steidel. Pull up on the elbow. Give to McRoberts. Short corner right. He loses it as he goes up in good defense that time by Javante Green for Radford. It's the Highlanders basketball. Driving right side. It's slicing and dicing. R.J. Price down low on the right. Lay in good. That's a nice move by Price. Just getting right down the middle of the lane. A little bit of contact, but went up uh, using the backboard to soften the shot, getting it to go. Radford has explosive guards with Price and Green. Bell Haynes passes, tipped down low, last touch by Trey. Cat Catamount guards are getting, Out of them, they're getting themselves into trouble when they start to drive in the middle of the lane. If they get along the baseline, they leave their feet, and the ball, you know, once you leave your feet, you're in trouble. You get in kind of no man's land, and you got to force, uh, force the issue. And, Again, that's just uh, the troublesome is that's uh, the eighth turnover here in the first ten and a half minutes. And Bell Haynes has four giveaways himself. 21 to 18, Catamounts though still. Radford ball left end. In the post, Keon Brown against O'Day. He backs him down, lowers the shoulder, and gets the clean lefty hook. It's a nice move by Brown right there. Again, just clearing some space on the bump with O'Day, going up with the left hand and finishing. EO has to break the Radford press himself this time, which he has done in the past. The big man for UVM takes the court, now has to avoid the five second violation and does just in time by passing out. Ward drive, step back, right elbow jumper, rims in and out, rebound Radford. Good shot by Cam, nice little pull up from 15, but the pressure on the perimeter has gone to another level for Radford. Quick penetration by Green, scoop shot no good, Vermont has the ball. They go from left to right, jogging down the court. 21 to 20 UVM, nearly the 8.30 mark in the first. Vermont with quick swings around the perimeter. Now to O'Day, foul line extended right, goes middle, steps through, can't get the shot this time. O'Day had been nearly perfect from the field, had been four or five before that shot. In transition, a palming violation called against R.J. Price, high on the left side, so a turnover back to Vermont. The first Radford turnover of the game Vermont with eight giveaways up to this point. Well, that was one of the keys that we talked about in terms of being able to take care of the basketball and the pressure from Radford is as advertised. Just uh, very, very good, taking Vermont out of their comfort zone, but you turn the ball over in the first 12 minutes and you're still up one. You know, if you can tighten that up, you're gonna be in good shape. Little issue for UVM getting the basketball in, but they will re-inbound with Harold guarded by the lanky Dyer jumping up and down in the Radford press to Ward, far left corner in front of the UVM bench. Both Vermont and Radford players clear out as Ward takes it past half court, guarded tightly by Price the whole time one-on-one. -on -one. Harold to Urquhart, left elbow, kind of intercepted the pass that was intended for Steidel there, missed the shot, rebound Radford. A yeah, good 15-footer there by Urquhart. Uh, set a little flare screen for Steido. Uh, got the pass because his man went to him, got a 15-footer, didn't go. Steido was like, wait a second, what's going on here? Shrugged his shoulders a little bit after Urquhart missed the shot. 10 seconds to shoot. Off the high screen, Noreen moves up top. Now there's five. Crossover from Price going right. Tough fadeaway. Floater is good. You live with that shot right there. Nice crossover as the shot clock is winding down. Fades away, go towards the UVM bench, and just kind of flicked it in. Seventh in the opening half. Radford takes the lead back, 22-1. This has been an exciting game so far, back and forth. Hat looking to take the bigger Dyer one-on-one. -on -one. Gives to Urquhart, far post. He's posting up Holcomb, backs down, kick out, back to Hatton. There's now five to shoot, though. Hatton pulls up for three, off the back rim. Radford ball. Catamounts. Little stagnant, a lot of one-on-one -on -one right now. Against the UVM man-to-man -man defense, Noreen rolls it into the post. Holcomb against Urquhart. Kick out Price, a deep three ball on the way. No good, left side of the rim. Rebound Urquhart. Nice block out by Urquhart right there. Vermont coming off a victory in the first round of the CBI against Hofstra last time out, 85-81 against the CAA school. Playing Radford from the, from the Big South here in Patrick Jim. The shoulder gets the floater down low. Nice move by Cam off the high screen and roll with Hector Harold. The uh, the switch happened. Cam was able to finish at the rim. 
First ever matchup for Vermont against a Big South team. Here in Patrick Jim Holcomb, again in the post up against Urquhart. Pushes it up with the right hand. Another wild attempt by Holcomb. No good rebound, Vermont. Steidel trots up the court himself. Spin move inside. He traveled. Yeah, just, uh, you know, the guards tried to take away the point guards. The Radford defenders tried to wake, uh, take away the outlet. Steidel brought it up, tried to get in the lane. Jump stop, pivot, shuffle defeat, travel. Part of it, UB doing, but the Radford defense comes as advertised. Nine Vermont turnovers so far, but the Catamounts lead it by one, all things considered. 23 to 22, the advantage over the Highlanders here in Patrick Gym. With immediate timeout and 6.08 in the first. This is UVM basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. BI quarterfinals, Vermont on top of Radford, 23-22. Glad you can join us here in Burlington alongside Bernie Saplicki, A.J. Cannell. Radford ball left side. This is Rashawn Davis back in there with two fouls, the small guard. Centers the pass up top. It's caught by Carruthers. Now, actually, Anderson catches the ball, hands it for Carruthers, places it home inside. Nice move again. A lot of isolation. Carruthers gets it on the block. Goes right at Urquhart and gets the layup to go. So Radford back on top, 24-23. Vermont's players clear out down the court, leaving Ward one-on-one -on -one against Davis. And he gets across the timeline in time. Ward multiple crossovers to the stripe. Lob pass back out for Wills with Vermont down by one late in the first. Wills goes baseline. Eight to shoot. Goes inside middle. Ball lost out of bounds off of Radford. Yeah, Dre gets into the lane. They reset the shot clock to 15. Was that kicked? I just was sort of shielded from the play, so apparently it was a kick. Had to be it if it's 15 in the shot clock. Hatton off the curl. Lob pass for O'Day. Was open but lost the ball. Stripped from behind. Ball picked up by McRoberts. Misses the jumper. It's tapped loose. Picked up by Wills at half court. Now to Ward right corner. Goes baseline further, and a foul called on the floor against the Highlanders. Yeah, great hustle right there by McRoberts and O'Day to keep that ball alive. Dre Wills, Dre Wills was able to corral it. And Catamounts pick up the foul, the 15th foul on Radford. First on Taj Owens. Cam Ward crossover, step back from up top. He drains it. Nice pullback, long two for Cam Ward right there. And back to a one-point lead for UVM. They're seesawing back and forth here. Davis for three, knocks it down from the left wing. Or make that Anderson knocking it up from up top on the right side. Yeah, again, just answers that call right away. Gets right to the uh, to open three-point line. Wills rising up left baseline, looking to counter that green slam. He gets it knocked away going up, but there's a foul. Wills got raked across the arm, going to the line for two. Yeah, the pace is uh, not slowed down at all. Back and forth action, very entertaining basketball game. First foul on Kyle Noreen, and the sixth on Radford. Dre Wills will get two. And he misses, he's scoreless so far in this one. Wills really struggled at the line last time out. One of six, missed some costly free throws against Hofstra but the team still 
was able to get the win around him. In fact, Vermont, as a team in that game, was not very good from the line. The team, they were just 23 of 36. Wills misses both. So he's had some major issues there the last couple games now. Rad for the ball, up by two. In the road reds, Vermont in the home goals. Noreen left wing, checked by Hatton. One righty dribble, kicks it for Yaya Anderson to the far wing. Where Owens has it. Now a pass down low to the post. It is Errant, and it's a Vermont ball. That went inside to Green. Green tried to do a quick spin and put the ball down. Dribbled it off his foot out of Vermont. 4.03 in the first, Vermont ball. Down by two, 27-25. Catamounts move it from left to right. Ward across the strike. Lobs it for McRoberts in the post. Triple team. His pass deflected, picks it back up. Now, Hatton far corner. Drives in, steps back. Vermont discombobulated right now offensively. It's Ward near half court with eight to shoot. One on one against Owens. Goes right, kicks McRoberts, launches the three. Got it. First three pointer made by the Catamounts today off the screen and roll between the two freshmen, Ward and McRoberts. McRoberts steps back, gets the three to go right as the shot clock's about to ex expire. For McRoberts, just the fifth three that he makes this season, but the second game in a row that he's hit a three. Crowd getting into it now. Noreen feeding the post. Hook shot, no good that time by Carruthers from the right block. Rebound Vermont, it's Ward racing ahead, lob pass, McRoberts, good feed for O'Day, lay and got it. Great touch pass by McRoberts to O'Day. O'Day hung in the air, got the layup to go, cats up three. Some of the crowd on his feet here. 30-27 UBM, 2.45 in the first half. To the left wing, and Taj Owens. Centers it up top. Now Owens gets it back to the post left side. One on one, Carruthers, O'Day. Good spin move with the release by Carruthers. Goes up strong, draws the foul. It's a nice move right there. O'Day with a little too much contact. You know, the questionable maybe, but only the third team foul for the Catamounts. And there's two and a half minutes to go. Coach Becker is ardently arguing, but will not get what he wants there. Foul on O'Day, foul shots coming for Radford after the under four timeout. 2.34 in the first half, 30 to 27 Vermont. This is UVM basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. wanted to keep on playing. Kind of a good sign of senior leadership for both Radford and UVM spurring their appearances in this tournament. Yes, it is. You know, you got to appreciate that because the seniors put so much time and effort th into it and laying the foundation for the future and you want to continue to play as much as you can. Carruthers is able to convert on both free throws. He checks out for Lucas Dyer and the makes allow Radford to set up in the press against Vermont. Five on the floor for Vermont. Hatton, Ward, Bell Haynes, O'Day, McRoberts. 
Inbounds pass to O'Day. Handoff back to Bell Haynes. That'll make Radford retreat. Sometimes a token pressure from the Highlanders to O'Day, right post. He's backing his man down. He turns. His shot is blocked in the air by Dyer. Radford with the ball, down by one. Racing ahead is Green in transition. No monster flush this time, but on the scoop shot left, the foul is called. Yeah, that's a nice play right there by Green going coast to coast. Dyer starts it all with the weak side help on O'Day and blocking that shot. Green will go to the line. He is just a bunch of limbs flying around like crazy. Javante Green, the first foul on Bell Haynes. Four on Vermont, now two for Javante Green at the line. He already has eight points in the game. And the 70% foul shooter misses the first, gets to the line often, leading his team with four and a half attempts and six, uh, six and a half attempts, four and a half makes per game. He's got five rebounds and three steals already in the first half as well. Green, who was an all Big South first team member back to back, makes the second for nine points. Second on the Radford all-time list in career points, nearly with 2,000 on his career, Javante Green. So we're tied at 30 here. Outlet feed from Hatton to O'Day, a little bit behind EO, but Ethan has it. Now back to Bell Haynes, who drives in through the right, and a foul call to reach in against Radford. That'll send Trey to the line for one and one. Foul on Dyer. First on Dyer. One and one here for Trey on the seventh. Bell Haynes, six points so far, but four turnovers. Gets the roll, the first free throw. Bell Haynes is three of three from the field. He's been an assist man lately, despite no assists in this game so far. Bell Haynes with five plus assists in five of the last six games for UVM and the player who is second in the America East in assists per game so far in this game. He's scoring the ball, but neutralized a little bit in terms of his passing by just the pace of the, the game, the way the game is going with the aggressive defense as he makes both. Well, Vermont has three assists on 13 field goals just because the pressure is so much that there's gotta be isolation yep. and, and the Radford, the uh, weak side defenders are staying home. Most effective thing, just dribble the basketball, not risk a lot of the cross-court passes that you normally would against a team like this. 10 seconds to shoot here for Radford, 138 in the first half. 32 to 30, Vermont. Radford ball left side now, four to shoot. Jones to the post, fadeaway shot by Green, splash. Great recognition by Green, knew the shot clock was winding down. Caught it on the post, went right into the fadeaway. Got it to go. But one of the costs of pressing frequently is over fouling, and Radford does so there in the backcourt, fouling Bell Haynes about 80 feet away from the bucket. He'll get more free throws here, one and one. Yeah, and a smart play by Trey right there as he just kind of initiated the contact, dribbling into Dyer. Dyer couldn't get away and gets the, uh, the easy foul call. Second on Dyer. Eighth on Radford. Trey makes the first. Bell Haynes came into this game 16 of 18 from the line in his last three. He's made three in a row here from the charity strike. Make it four in a row. Trey has double figures joining Ethan O'Day. And Vermont back up by two. And the Cats seven for nine from the line in the first half. 115 in the first. R, uh, R.J. Price left wing to the post green. Slips by one man, but his shot is short. Rebound Vermont. Bell Haynes racing ahead. Kick out Stottle. Right wing three. Knocks it down. Great find by Trey Bell Haynes in transition. Drew the, drew the uh, lane defender, which created space for Stottle to catch and shoot. Vermont is a game high five point lead with 50 seconds to go in the first. Pull up by Price. He's fouled in the air by Bell Haynes. Shot no good, but two shots here on the second on Trey. Tough, tough one, uh, tough one right there. Good, uh, good little acting job by Price right there as that would look like a good contest and fell after the shot was released and he knew it was off. Didn't look like a lot of contact to me. Well, Reggie Miller, Derek Fisher type of thing. 
kick the legs out or? All right, where's Rashid when we need him? Ball don't lie, as Price is no good with the first. 69% foul shooter, Radford is not a very good free throw shooting team. 69% as a team, not terrible, but not great. And Price can't get the roll on the second either. Rebound Vermont, a five point lead plus the ball. A two for one opportunity, Ward tries, misses from the right wing. Rebound tracked down that time by Green in the corner. Timeout Radford and really with a 2.7 difference game clock and shot clock, not much of a two for one opportunity at this point, but Radford with a chance here after the timeout to wind down most of the remaining clock. Yeah, I, I like that right there. They tried to go a little quicker. Right. Uh, went to a little, uh, threw it to O'Day on the wing. Cam trailed it, got the ball. His defender tried to go underneath Ethan. Cam pulled back, was right on line, a little strong. Loose ball rebound, went towards the sideline, took Radford a second or two to get that, uh, get the ball, and once they did, you know, like you said, there's two seven to go, but I, I like the way they tried to, to create a little more tempo. I think one hidden impact of the 30 second shot clock, which they're experimenting with here, is that not only will it up the pace of play overall, but just we're seeing it here end of the first half, but particularly the end of game situations you can have more possessions at the end of games instead of just the team that's in the lead standing there and trying to dribble. And it'll give the team that's behind more of an opportunity to come back without having to always foul because there'll be more possessions available to loosen up the game late. Yeah, you know, like again, the more the more possessions you create, the better off it is, the more chances to come back. You know, I just I just think it's uh, it's great for the game. I think the players are ready for it too, their ability. Heck, they use the 30 second shot clock in the women's game at the college level. Bring it into the men's, like the experimentation here in the NIT, CPI, and CIT. The 2.7, the differential. Radford basketball left end. Nearing the end of the first half. Steidel harassing Noreen up top. Noreen flops like a jellyfish up top. Looks like Steidel did get him, but clearly on the reaction by Noreen, the foul called. And I think that was one of those things, I think, as crazy as it may sound, I think he did it on purpose because it was a 16 foul to kind of break up the continuity of the offense before the end of the, the isolation. But a, a purposeful foul off the ball should be called an intentional in this game, but they didn't. Uh, shot clock off now, five seconds down low in the post. Bank shot good by Holcomb. Inbounds pass, buzzer sounds. And Vermont leads by three at halftime. Yeah, great execution there by Radford on that side out of bounds play to get a layup. Uh, at the end of the half, but the Cats up three and a half in a very entertaining first half of basketball. 37. semifinals second half starts with Vermont on top by three 37 34 over Radford with Bernie Saplicki AJ Cannell Vermont has the basketball on the left side of the court to start the second O'Day rises up goes for the power slam his shot is blocked rebound Radford they come quickly the other way as they're prone to do Vermont gets back on defense this time love the way that Ethan attacked the rim right there just couldn't get it to go Radford ball Good save by Holcomb, fading out of bounds near corner, back up top. 30 seconds into the second half. Vermont still up by three. Seven to shoot. It's Price dribbling up top, off the ball screen. Goes right, held up. He's trapped. Bounce feed in the post with one second. And Holcomb never knew it. And a shot clock violation as he tossed it for a cross-court pass. Yeah, that's great defense right there by Vermont. Just a really active. Great hedges by the big guys on the screen and rolls that uh, Radford were trying to put on out, out front and just a solid 30 seconds of D to force that turnover. Wonder if the players' internal clocks from time to time are set to 35 seconds, thus resulting in blunders like that. Maybe an example of that there as Bell Haynes pushes the issue quickly, draws a reach and foul. Yeah, it's a nice move by Bell Haynes right there and, and 
You know, that's an interesting point about the internal clock of the players. When you're playing for 35 seconds for the whole year and then they change it up to on you, you just, uh, you, you never know. Holcomb's a redshirt junior. He's seen three years of 35 second clocks. And on the entry pass, Nick Roberts jams it home, plus the foul. That's a great out of bounds play. Nick Roberts going right to the rim with the one handed flush, drawing the foul from Mr. Green. So we have seen two vicious dunks in this game. The one by Javante Green, which was just out of this world in the first half. And then Nick Roberts with the foul called on Green here in the second. And Nick Roberts getting the start in the second half for Hector Harold, who just uh, is giving it an effort, but uh, just, just doesn't look healthy. Very, very flush in the face. You can just tell he's not feeling well. Dealt with the flu the last couple games, last couple days rather, really wanted to play in this game and did in the first half, but the coaching staff was aware that there were limits to how much Heck could give. The free throw down for McRoberts, a game high six point lead for Vermont, 40 to 34. 110 gone in the second. Pass looking down low this time for Green, picked off by Vermont. Here comes Wills in the lane left, nearly tied up a twist through and lays it in. Nice move by Dre Wills. Everybody was looking to pass. The defender just kind of left him wide open and he went to the rim and finished. Pull up and the jumper is short that time by Davis from the foul line. Vermont the ball again up by eight. A win would bring the Cats to the CBI semis and Wills draws the foul on Yaya Anderson on the left side of the court. It's all UVM to begin the second. Yes, nice start, a 5-0 uh, run for the Catamounts here to build this lead to eight. Just again, it's it's very good defense leading to excellent offense. Already three fouls called on Radford in less than two minutes of game action in the second. Spin move by Steidel. Center of the paint, loses the ball but chases and retrieves. 20 seconds to shoot for Bell Haynes, guarded by Davis up top. Off the screen by O'Day. Bell Haynes goes down low. A lot of contact there. His shot blocked by Holcomb, but Holcomb's outlet feed goes right to Steidel. Vermont ball again off the Radford turnover. O'Day left baseline, fakes the shot. Entry feed to McRoberts, back out to O'Day, backs his man down, steps through multiple times, righty hook shot is on target, and Vermont leads it by 10. That's just great patience by Ethan O'Day on the inside. He created a little contact, spun, got the layup, cats up 10, timeout Radford. Mike Jones stops play, and Vermont has its largest lead, a 10-point advantage with a 7-0 start to the second. Vermont 44, Radford 34, a timeout taken by Mike Jones. We'll take a break as well with 17.36 in the second half. This is UVM Basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. at Vermont, which struggled against the Radford Press early on with turnovers, nine turnovers in the first half. But Vermont's last turnover came with the 6.08 mark in the first. Yes, you know, and again, you know, that's not almost nine minutes of not turning over against the pressure. Radford had 12 points against pressure or off of turnovers in the first half, and that's uh, just uh, slightly over a third. So you take away those easy opportunities, you extend your lead to 10 as we are right now. The Radford ball off the timeout taken by head coach Mike Jones for the Highlanders. Three-pointer taken by Price no good, knocked out of bounds off of Radford. So UVM ball. That was great execution coming out of the timeout by Radford. They got Price a great look 
for three and uh, just uh, off the mark, out of bounds to the Catamounts. Gives Radford the opportunity to set up their pressure. Speaking of the turnovers, Radford, meanwhile, after only two first half turnovers, already with three second half giveaways. We played just three minutes in the second. 10 point Vermont advantage. Entry fee by McRoberts, intended for O'Day, picked off. Like a gazelle going in down low. Green loses the ball, turns it over, goes back to UVM. Yeah, right there, McRoberts threw it away. He had the daunting task of trying to play green in that half court possession. He was smart enough to back, back off and off of his crossover green, was able to deflect it and hit it off his leg out of bounds back to Vermont. 44-34, Wills dribbling up top on the right. Goes cross court to Bell Haynes. Guarded one on one by RJ Price. O'Day sets the screen. Now sets another pick for Stottle. Catch and shoot three, very short. But Kurt chases down the rebound. Good second effort by Stottle right there following his own shot to give the Catamounts another 30 seconds. Feed from Bell Haynes, chest pass towards Nick Roberts, cut off and poked away by the Steel's leader for Radford Green. Transition three ball, and Yaya Anderson says, yes, sir, knocks it down from up top. And again, that's Green's fifth steal, and that uh, leads to a three-point shot. So lead down to seven. Catamounts just got to take care of the basketball. 44 to 37. Vermont down by seven. Spin move by Wills inside, laying in the foul. What a move by Dre, floating in right. That's a big answer by Dre right there as the momentum was hanging in the balance. Dre went to his left, spun back, got the hoop at the layup, and when we come back, he'll go to the line for three. And draws the second foul on Yaya Anderson, who says no, no to that call. Forty-six to thirty-seven, Vermont on top of Radford. Fifteen fifty-six in the second. By the way, my apologies to the Radford fan base for having to hear that. The reason I say that with the Yaya Anderson pun, I can't imagine how many times he and his fan base have had to hear stuff like that. So I actually feel bad. Think about it. Yeah, he's a, he's a junior, and like it's a great nickname but he probably just hears jokes all the time. Almost rightfully so, but Wills misses the front end rebound, Radford. Radford ball right end. Anderson, left wing, pulls for three, misses off the front rim. Rebound, Bell Haynes. Races up the floor, gives to Wills. Penetrates towards the foul line, kick out Bell Haynes. Fakes the top of the key three, goes in, reach up and in for the lay-in. Great move by Trayvell Haynes, just slicing through the defense and finishing. 12 points for Bell Haynes, 11 point Vermont lead. Great second half start, Jones is fouled, driving in right. That's Dre, foul on Dre right there. He's got four points, four rebounds, two blocks. Uh, little, little touch foul right there. Wills will check out along with Bell Haynes. Cam Ward, Brandon Hatton in. Vermont up by 11. Anderson off the screen. 
fires a shot from the baseline off the inbounds pass, misses it. The offensive rebound for Radford. Good job overall in the game by UBM limiting those offensive rebound attempts. Step back move by Jones, knocks down the jumper far side along to baseline. Pretty baseline jumper by Jones right there. Like you said, getting into the lane, creating space by stepping back and getting that jumper to go. It's a nine point lead now, 11 to five start to the second half for UVM, 48-39. O'Day towards the middle, kick out far side, Hatton faking in, give out Ward, he shuffles his feet on the right wing. Yeah, so Radford ball. Cam just kind of got caught in no man's land right there. Nice shot fake. But shuffled the feet a little too much. Drew Urquhart into the game. Ethan O'Day a little banged up, as was Bell Haynes when he left. So O'Day wincing right now, being checked on by the training staff. Looks like they're holding O'Day's knee after maybe a, a bruise. We'll don't want to jump to conclusions, but after Bell Haynes went out to the locker room, now O'Day goes behind to be taken away. With Hector Harold already out with the flu, actually he just checked back in. So good to go for at least part of the second half. A foul called against UVM on a drive in far side by Radford. So courageous here for Hector. Back into the game with the flu. Yes, you know, now just got to kind of piece it together here for the last uh, 14 minutes and, and 19 seconds of the game. I think the foul there went on Wills. Uh, Brandon Hatton. Now Radford ball still right in. Strong move by Green down low. Misses, but the putback is good for Javante Green. This is part of the part of the thing with pressure, just kind of wearing teams down to see if you can force them into turnovers late. Vermont feeds over it and breaks it. It can have that hidden impact, even if you don't create a lot of turnovers all the time, of fatigue later in the game. Ward right wing, goes middle, kick out Hatton, drives baseline, rises, dishes, Ward drives, kicks for Wills, he swoops inside. Oh, look at the contact, and an acrobatic shot, flips it up and in and a foul, they count the bucket, the official signal. That's a great move right there by Trey Wills again. Getting that contact, flipping it up and getting it to go. Second That's foul on Javante Green. Javante Green, you know, 13 points, seven rebounds, five steals so far. One free throw for Wills. Already has six points in the game. And Wills makes a shot at the line, which is a good sign. He was 0 of 3 prior to that one in the game and 1 of 6 last time out. The lead back up to 10 with 13.30 in the game here in the CBI quarterfinals, 51-41. And the Cat Catamount's changing up a little 2-3 zone right now. They've shown it from time to time this season. Carruthers misses the baseline two. Offensive board Jones gets the put back from straight away. And that's one of the hardest things to do in the zone is to uh, to rebound out of it because there's just people flying around all over the place. Harold feed to Wills, breaks the timeline. Wills feeling it, drop off. Urquhart got the bucket and the bump. Nice catch and finish by Urquhart right there. Dre Wills attacking, dropping it off to the big fella who got hit in the head, gets the hoop. It goes to the line for the natural three-point play. Just like the win against Hofstra last time out, Vermont has done a superb job of every time the other team looks to be making that run, you counter back. Yes, and then the balance is so good. O'Day with 12, Trey Bell Haynes with 12, Dre Wills with seven, Urquhart with, with seven, misses that free throw, and then McRoberts with six and Ward with four, so everybody chipping in. Vermont searching for its fifth postseason win in the program's history. Four and ten all time, but with two CBI victories. Jumper by Green, right side, no good. Rebound UBM, three on two in transition. Will sweeping in, his shot blocked from behind by Green. But a foul was called after the rebound against Radford. Yeah, and a technical a foul they against Radford. Yep. Dre, Dre, uh, Dre Wills went to the hoop, got pinned, and Green... Let him know about it after the foul, after the uh, pin. Took the ball, threw it back to Dre Wills, and they got a technical on it for uh, disconcertion or unsportsmanlike conduct. And now the Radford coaching staff is unhappy. 
shouting at the officials about the decision. So the, the pin happened, then Dre, Trey Bell Haynes got the rebound, went up, got fouled by, by Jones, which was his second and the team's seventh team foul, and then there was a technical foul on Green. Superb block by Green. Oh, un unbelievable athletic play once again. Just for a senior who could be playing in his final game if Radford doesn't advance, a costly technical, which also gives him his third personal. Vermont benefited from one of the key seniors for Hofstra, Dion Nesmith, fouling out early in the second. Last time out, Bell Haynes with the first technical free throw gets the roll. Trey's been very consistent all year from the foul line, 80%, hasn't really dipped or peaked too much. It's been around 80 all year. And <laughs> yeah, that's why, because even putting it up near the rim, he'll get the benefit of the doubt from the cylinder. He gets two good shooters rolls and makes two technical foul shots. So Bell Haynes now has 14. He's four of four, or six of six now from the line. And he'll have two free throws additionally. Right, yeah. the, the, the first two were the technical, and now he goes to the line <laughs> for his two free throws. After the, the green technical and the Jones personal foul, Bell Haynes hits again. So now all of a sudden he's seven of seven at the line. And he can't get the friendly roll that time. Nearly crept up and in from the front rim. Instead bounced off to the side. So seven of eight, rebound Radford. After all that, 56 to 43. Vermont on top of Radford, 12-28 in the game. Radford ball, right side, post up against Urquhart. Hook shot by Brown is too short. And Vermont grabs the ball. Great defense by Urquhart right there, and really elevated to go get that rebound. So uh, again, the strides that he's made over the course of the year have been tremendous. Catamounts have outscored Radford by 10 so far in the second half to lead it by 13 at this point. Nearing the 12 minute mark, Ward for three. Fadeaway look, no good. And skying for the rebound, Cameron Jones. Here's Davis in semi-transition. Vermont gets back, Wills steals it from behind. Knocked out of bounds, the officials are uncertain and a very hesitant call to give the ball back to Radford. In that situation, call the jump. The officials had no idea. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't see. I was, you know, because of where the ball was and how deep it was in the corner, but they talked to each other and not an emphatic call, but uh, Radford ball. Timeout on the floor with 11.53 to go. In the game, 56 to 43, UVM in control over Radford. UVM. Game, Vermont on top of Radford, 56 to 43. The Catamounts have controlled things so far in the second. Ethan O'Day after being lifted with a apparent leg injury right now on the exercise bike next to the UVM bench. Which is a good thing. Gabe coached the uh, I'm okay signal as he got onto the, uh, onto the bike. And we mentioned Bell Haynes, he's back in the game. As you might've heard before, Jones triggers a right corner three off the back rim. A chase for the loose ball, McRoberts has it. Nice block out by McRoberts. He stayed in front of Jones on that jumper instead of flying by him on the contest. And because he did that fundamentally sound, was able to corral that rebound. Bell Haynes attacks the rim, laying no good, doesn't fall. Rebound Radford. Now the Highlanders push. Price 
floating ahead right side. Got the lay in. That's a nice move in transition by Price. Just going coast to coast and finishing at the rim. I mean, even Dre Wills off the tray. Val Haynes had a tip in right there opportunity. A lot of speed from the guards in this game. And a steal by Davis. Transition lay in no good, but the offensive rebound and the putback by Dyer. Vermont. Letting that press get to him there. It's now a nine point game. Urquhart held up in the backcourt. And John Becker calls a timeout with Drew Urquhart trying to cross half court. <laughs> Look at that. The assistant coach, or was that Mike Jones himself? That was Coach Jones himself. Coach Jones for Radford looked at the shot clock, saw 25 seconds, and said, <laughs> wait a second, 10 second violation. Momentarily forgot that we're experimenting with the 30 second shot clock in the CBI and it was kind of a, an occasion to laugh for everybody in his seats and his players and him. Yeah, it was pretty funny right there. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, you know, just one of those, <laughs> I forgot about that. And you, like you said, you talk about being so used to the 35 second shot clock and uh, just uh, a, good, a good light moment right there. Kind of the thing that I like about the CBI, it's a chance for both sides to continue to work and just keep playing, but just kind of just, it sounds really, really corny, like the corniest thing we've said this season besides those eight puns we've used so far, or I've used tonight, but it's just a chance to have fun playing. I think everybody that like there's there's some tension. We saw the technical foul, but just you're still you're still playing hard. You're still but playing the, hard, the, but the magnitude of the game isn't uh, you know like an America East yeah. semifinal game or an NCAA game or, or something like that. You're still playing for a championship and competing, but uh, you know it's just, just have some fun. Yeah, like you said, nothing better than playing the game of basketball. Is that me who said that? Or that was me. Okay. I'll give you credit for it. <laughs> or the blame in some yeah, cases, like I pointed it'll out. It'll definitely be blame. Style a corner three, no good. Weak side rebound, Nick Roberts goes up, lefty lay in, no good. Gets it again, Nick Roberts pushes out for Style. Now Bell Haynes, right to the rim. Righty lay in is good on a third offensive rebound, a third attempt at the bucket for UVM. And again, just Nick Roberts right there, just creating second and third chance with effort on the glass. Lead back up to 11. Being around the double digit mark. Most of the second now. Pass inside, picked off by Vermont. Another turnover forced. Yeah, great hedge by McRoberts right there, going across the lane and picking that ball. Now Bell Haynes nearly has his pocket picked by Davis. Wills drives baseline. Kick out McRoberts, steps into a three ball. It's short. Was online, but short. Rebound for the Highlanders. Yeah, Davis is uh, giving. Uh, Trey Bell Haynes, all he can handle with his ball pressure right now. Good experience for Bell Haynes against Pesky Jr. Davis. Hand off to Jones. Around the back dribble, top of the key. Radford's committed five turnovers so far in the second half after just two in the first. Baseline penetration by Price. He rises up. Jump ball is called. It'll stay this time with Radford, with Wills and Urquhart in there. Wills primarily tying him up from behind. Yeah, great help by uh, by Dre right there. Eight seconds left on the shot clock, so the Catamount's got to be prepared for a quick hitter here. Left baseline feed coming from Price. He triggers in. Noreen to the top of the key. Dyer, five to shoot. Jones recognizes it. Pulls up for three. Off the back rim. And a high arcing rebound caught by O'Day. He goes falling to the ground. Has to avoid the travel. Tosses the ball perilously. But Vermont ends up coming up with a loose ball. Yeah, Jones getting a pretty good look at the uh, as the shot clock went down, and O'Day able to block out, hold the block out, and corral the rebounds. 15 to shoot. Now all of a sudden for UVM, just barely getting into their offense. And now 10 seconds left to shoot. O'Day, though, knocks down the 17-footer. Yeah, the pick and pop right there. Nice play by Cam Ward coming off the, double, the, uh, the ball screen. O'Day popped to his little 17-foot jumper. Got it to go. Crossovers by Jones, left wing. Back to Davis up top. Vermont leads it 60 to 47 here in the CBI quarters. Lob feed over the top of Nick Roberts. A good job of Zach disrupting the pass. Vermont takes another turnover. Stottle a transition three ball. He got it. Great play right there. Started with Nick Roberts' defense. Dre Wells brings it up the floor, finds Steidel trailing, gets the three, cats up 16. No timeout taken yet. He's Instead, Coach Jones for Radford just talking to the officiating crew. Radford has the ball down 63-47, 8-10 in the game. And Nick Roberts denies another post pass and forces the turnover, second in a row. 
That's McRoberts. His footwork is phenomenal defensively in the post. Not leaning on people, but using his feet to get around, and his long arms are deflecting those passes. Three steals for McRoberts. Reach around feed Ward to Urquhart. Drop down Wills. His shot falls off. His dunk attempt goes too short. The feed there, pardon me, by O'Day in transition. A foul is called against UVM with Jones rising up and I think like a little cramp up or something by Jones. All of a sudden sort of seizing up with the don't lower he, limb. Yeah, I don't know if he landed uh, wrong on his ankle right there. But he made a great defensive play on the uh, on the dunk attempt by Dre Wills. Was able to get it, go coast to coast, get the foul at the other end. Foul was called on Nick Roberts. Defending there and a timeout of the floor. But Vermont has started to run away. Cruz with this game in the second half. And a timeout here with 7.39 to go. Vermont 63, Radford 47. This is UVM Basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. at the home side of the other team. So Vermont wins. There also could be a possibility of another home game, at least one more home game here at Patrick. Yes, you know, but again, first things first, let's finish out the last uh, seven minutes. You're the one who brought time. up the potential for that during the time outbreak. I, I did, but first things first, we, okay. gotta, we gotta finish out the last uh, 7.39. And a key to doing that is something we've, we've seen actually in spots in the first weekend of the NCAA tournament against with teams like West Virginia, Arkansas, those teams are tough to put away. The pressing teams, they can rally back in late in games because that's what they do. They, they, they press and they can create turnovers and Radford is capable of doing that. Yeah, and that's why you know they're gonna have to, if they make this free throw, which they do, they're gonna set up their press. They bring, uh, they bring Davis back in who's created all kinds of havoc as, as Radford has now gone really small. That was Noreen shooting the free throws. Because Jones was hurt yeah, with Jones his ankle. Yeah, Jones had to leave. Yep. So Noreen comes in and knocks down both. 14 point contest. Wills in the middle of the lane. Kick style, far side three from the corner, no good. And Wills knocks down Davis, committing the loose ball foul. Also Wills there, got towards the lane. Vermont has been smothered so often inside. Wills was expecting the same. They vacated. Wills wasn't even looking towards the hoop. If he had been, he would have had probably a dunk. Yes, you know, and just one of those things. Now it's a 14 point game. With, uh, with 7.25 to go. Catamounts, you know, got to step on the accelerator a little bit here and, and finish the job. Now Green goes inside, strong left block lane, and a foul. Yeah, he just went right at O'Day and uh, just uh, created the bucket to cut the lead to 12. Heard it from public address announcer Steve Gentile, the second on EO, fifth on Vermont. So far, eight fouls, though, on Radford, which will make their attempts to press and play aggressive a little bit more difficult down the stretch. Green going to the line for one in the old-fashioned three-point play. He got it. 
Now Catamounts really, you know, if they're going to press like this, you want to attack and, and go get layups. Go finish, go, you know, make them make them pay for pressing. Attack, go right to the rim, and finish. 14 points for Green, leads Radford. Ward trapped in the backcourt. Gets it across the timeline of Wills. A momentary numbers advantage for UBM, but Radford retreats. 11-point game now, seven-minute mark in the second. Wills at the stripe. Kicks for O'Day, right of the circle. Now Ward circles in, he stops, hands out to Zach. Overhead pass caught by O'Day, left post. Double team, righty hook shot, no good. Rebound Radford. The Highlanders on a 5-0 run since Vermont took the game high lead by 16. Pass towards the perimeter deflected by Wills. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Radford. Entry near our location and just shy of half court in the back court now for Radford with 21 to shoot. Almost a little tip right there. Dre got his hands on the ball. I thought it went off Anderson, but I thought wrong. Not the first time, not the last time. For sure. <laughs> I'm in the same boat though. Carruthers, nice move, righty hook shot, banks it home. And, and Radford kind of imposing their will on the Catamounts to cut the lead to nine with 6.15. Not Vermont would cruise to victory. That's not necessarily the case here. Seven nothing run for Radford. Ward having trouble in the backcourt. He's trapped, lob pass, jump ball, caught by O'Day. Lob feed another jump ball. Nick Roberts can't get it, a turnover. Here comes Radford right to left, or left to right rather. Transition three, no good by Price. Rebound Nick Roberts and a big rebound to settle things down. Got to go and attack and get him to get a layup here. Cam Ward crosses the timeline from right to left. Vermont faithful arguing that Radford's being too physical. Ward, nice spin move inside left, got the bucket, and gets the foul. That's a great move right there by Cam Ward. Just, uh, you know, really, Davis is so much physically stronger than Cam right now, and just took it right to him, took the contact, and got it to go. Great play by Cam. The one thing is, in, it's the second straight game for UVM against the physical type guards that have speed. And there have been times when the opponent has had the physical edge against UVM. But don't confuse that for overall physical shape in the sense that Vermont can hang with them in terms sure. of their speed and quickness and athleticism in other ways. And you, that's kind of what you pointed out there. Right. And, you know, I mean, that's Davis being a junior and, and Ward being, being a freshman. And two years in the development of right. a, uh, a male's body is huge. And, you know, it definitely shows. Ward, who got the two plus the foul, missed the and one free throw. 65-54, Vermont with the lead. Radford with the ball. Price, open left corner three. Gets the roll. That one hit the rim and the backboard. The rim again and fell. Yeah, just a shooter's touch right there for Price to cut the lead from 11 to 8. 65-57, entry feed, looking for Ward, out of bounds, off of UBM. It was knocked out by Noreen off of Ward's knee. 5.07 left in the game, a turnover back to Radford here. Eight-point game. This is not over yet. Not even close. And some uncertain silence here in the arena. Inbounds pass to Yaya Anderson for Radford. Now up top, Green hands it off to Price and then commits the offensive foul. And uh, Noreen just ran right into Dre, uh, I'm sorry, Trey Bell Haynes on a little dribble handoff like you were talking about. He just blasted him and an easy part of the official. Yeah, Noreen that is his second. And the 10th on Radford, yeah. so double bonus for UVM. Which is, which is a good thing and, and that being uh, a player control foul, you know, there's no shots. Pass towards the corner is caught by Steidel near the out of bounds marker. A little bit errant, the feed by McRoberts, but Kurt hauled it in. Now Belhane trapped up top, spills through, falls, loses the ball, no foul call. Two on one, Price to Green, missed the lay in too strong. Rebound O'Day, who's fouled. Yeah, just a crazy play right there. You know, Green. On the double team, Trey Haynes trying to step through. Uh, could have been some contact, lost the ball. Radford with an easy two-on-one break. Their best player, Green, missing both layups, uncharacteristic, and then committing his fourth foul. O'Day going to the line. Need to connect these on these two to get it back to 10 points and kill the momentum of Radford. The fourth foul is crucial. 
but not even as much as that miss laying by Green. He just kind of lost the ball as he went up. Yeah. And O'Day knocks down the first free throw. EO has 15 points. Second only to Bell Haynes for Vermont. And Green has 16 for Radford. EO with seven rebounds and two blocks as well. Fourth all-time shot blocker, Vermont history. <laughs> Several games back became the holder of that spot in the UBN record books. Makes both. Cam Ward checks out of the game. For the five on the floor for Vermont, Bell Haynes, Wills, Steidel, Nick Roberts, and O'Day. Again. Yeah, Catamount's got to get a stop here. Again, Hector Harold, Bernie, been battling the flu for most of the game. So yeah. Nick Roberts has been in there. And played well today. B to the post. Shot by Carruthers, and a foul against Vermont. So that is the sixth on UVM, and on O'Day, his third. And now the rest of the way, it'll be Radford shooting. Yeah, so, you know, got to tighten it up defensively if you're Vermont. Don't foul, block out, take care of the ball. 4-19 to play, 67-57 Vermont. Oh, sir. Nick Roberts, strip price going sir. up, and a foul called. In the paint underneath, about seven feet away. Nick Roberts thought he got all ball. So do I. I mean, that was that was right in front of us. The referee was, like, the, his, the players' backs were to the referee on that other angle. He had no right. There's a referee standing right in front of us. Just a, uh, a tough break for the Catamounts in very good hands by Nick Roberts. Second foul on Zach. So they call that on the floor, too. I thought that if it was a foul, it would be shooting. But it was close in a one and one. It doesn't matter because Price hits the first. So Price now has 10. You know what I like? With an extra game, more games in the CBI, forget the basketball, another chance for you to complain about the refs. And I do that very well, and I do it a lot. I know I'm a bad example. But uh, now the Catamounts just, uh, again, as Radford sets up their price after the made free throws. Got to take care of the ball, break this pressure, and get a layup out of it. Price hit them both. 67-59, 4-10 to go. Bell Haynes across the timeline. Youngsters, if you're listening, don't do what Bernie does. Play through the bad calls. That's right. Or the questionable calls. Lob pass to Wills from O'Day. Over the top of the defense, and Wills has the layup. Great pass by Ethan O'Day. Great cut by uh, Dre Wills to catch and finish. Wills is electric with those backdoor cuts on the baseline. Ten-point game again. Anderson fires from deep. No good off the backboard from three. And a foul call in the rebounding action against Radford and Carruthers. Yeah, good block out by Dre Wills right there. And he'll go to the line for two when we come back uh, from the under four timeout. Final media timeout of the game. It's 69-59. to 59. Vermont leads Radford. Catamounts have staved off a couple of runs and are still in control against the explosive Highlanders. This is UVM Basketball on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. points or fewer, but got their first victory in that category in a long time, last time out against Hofstra. 
So Vermont looking to once again prevail against a hungry opponent that wants to keep its season alive. Yes, and you know, it's just nice. And you know, with uh, Dre going to the line, hopefully he can capitalize here as he gets the first one to sneak in. But again, like you, you said, it's provide much more, you know, meaningful minutes for Drew Urquhart, you know, Zach McRoberts, those guys on the, on the interior, uh, especially with uh, the seniors, Ryan Pearson, unfortunately being injured. And, uh, you know, Hector, Hector Harold not feeling well tonight. So it just uh, gives them the opportunity as Wills misses the second free throw a little long. Radford with the ball. 70-59, Vermont up by 11, 3.30 to play. Price for three, left side, no. Off balance shot, UB and the rebound, Will splits the double team, nearly lost the ball into the forecourt, trapped in the corner, trapped and immediately calls a timeout once he saw the trap coming. Vermont has a couple timeouts to spare at this point. But with 3.20 left, that's not a ton against a pressing team, two timeouts left for UBM. And Vermont will have to do some work here against this pressing team. Right, and you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, Dre gets the rebound, does a good job locking out, splits the double team off the rebound, starts to dribble up the floor, kind of dribbles into no man's land, into right. the corner where the, our bench is, and uh, you know, heads up basketball play with three timeouts and 3.20 to go to, to get that timeout. He called it decisively too, which yeah. is instead of kind of monkeying around with it, yep. which is, I think is a good thing. Probably, if you could have had it back, as you mentioned, just don't dribble into the corner, but easier right. said than done yes. against the way that Radford well, the, the, the plays pursue that The pursuit that was coming, he was yeah. trying to avoid someone at the top of the yeah. key area, so he went to his right, someone was trailing him, and just a smart, smart decision to make that timeout. The attendance tonight announced 2,252, a nice turnout for a CBI game and the first ever postseason game for the men's team here in Patrick Gym. The women's team has hosted several including a few WNIT contests and an NCAA tournament game back in the day here at Patrick Gym. 3.20 to play. Vermont basketball left end. Up by 11. Good attempt by Davis from behind to poke away a pass from Bell Haynes, but can't grab it. It'll stay UVM ball. 10 to shoot. Trey up top. 35 feet away. Gives to Nick Roberts. Gets it back. He grinds through right side. With a lot of contact. He comes a foul. And free throws here for Trey with Radford in the double bonus. And that's four on Davis. And again, it's just uh, the ball pressure that he can put on is just, uh, it's, it's, rel it's relentless. It's, uh, it's impressive. He's still clapping his hands right now. They just have a ton of energy. Pressing teams have to, they have to just be really intimidating and just sort of just go, just go from start to finish, whether it be in the huddle just standing there during free throws or during the game. And Bell Haynes missed the first. Misses both. He'd been great at the line so far. It was seven and eight, seven, four, eight from the line before that trip. But misses both. Radford ball right side. 11 point for my lead. Wills picks the pass off. Ball knocked out of bounds off of Radford with Wills cruising ahead in transition. So Vermont ball. Good force turnover there by Dre. Who's, he would fit in well with this Radford team. Dre is very similar to a lot of the guards for Radford. Yes, his ability to get in the passing lane and pressure the ball is uh, is just as good as Radford, and he showed it right there by shooting the shooting the passing lane and uh, getting a deflection and forcing that turnover. But all the more important, obviously, in a team like UVM, with players who are different than Will's, different skill sets. Radford has like five guys who you can fuse for Dre in terms of the way that they play their aggressive style. Bell Haynes up top. He fends off as the call, or, or, or carries the ball as the call, and then he's actually shaken up. He's dealt under the radar with a foot injury for much of the season, hasn't complained, has been productive. He has to limp off this time, heads right to the tunnel, and Cam Ward comes in after Bell Haynes pawned and hurt his leg. 2.30 to play. Yeah, I don't know if you got a Charlie horse or if he uh, hit his, uh, hurt his foot. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. Price again tries a left wing three. He struggled, misses it. Offensive board for Anderson. Drive right paint, turn to his left. Tough floater on the way, no. Multiple tapping attempts, no. Another try for Green, the lane and a foul. Yeah, just Radford. Uh, Getting every loose ball and not going away easy right there is that uh, 
Green now with 18 points and 12 rebounds. Just trying to keep his career green going one more time. Does Dyer down low for a guy who's 6'4", 205. Impressive. He, he, he's, he's been one of the better players we've seen in this gym all, all season, for sure. Had a Sports Center top 10 nominee dunk early in the game. Tomahawk slam. I mean, we're nominating it. Yeah. Makes it a nominee. And Green hits the free throw. He has 19. Plus, like you said, 13 boards and five steals. But he's on the bench right now, offense, defense. They go with four fouls. Ramon against the press. Five seconds to get it over. Ward trapped. Here the half court divide. Feeds to the Steidel, they get it past half court. Okay. Now you gotta settle and get a bucket as we you got two minutes to go. 15 in the shot clock. It's an eight point Vermont lead, 70 to 62. Wills is trapped near side. Vermont has two timeouts to work with. They trap him near half court after he dribbles over there. To Steidel, five to shoot in the lane. Kick McRoberts, doesn't realize it. Tosses Steidel, fade away jumper. He got it. That's a huge shot right there by Steidel to get the lead back to 10 with a minute 38 to go. Great awareness, great shot by Steidel. Into oh, contact on the other man. end. It's Price crashing in, blocking foul. On Steidel. Steidel was looking to draw the charge. Looked like he caught Steidel clean. Maybe in the cylinder. It was close there, but just looked like Steidel drew the clean charge. Yeah, hard, hardest. Uh, We've said it many times this year, hardest call in the game right there. So 137 to play. It's still a Vermont control game. A 10 point lead, but Price hits the first foul shot. Price, the other Highlander with uh, double figures, has he has uh, 12 now. Who will win the first ever matchup between Vermont and Radford, the Big South team? Price hits them both. The first ever matchup between Vermont and any Big South team. 72-64, 1.37 to play. McRoberts has to call timeout before the entry. And this could start to become a problem. Vermont against Radford in this late game situation with their press. Good things for UVM. The Catamounts have the possession arrow and they are in the double bonus as Radford is as well. But just one timeout left. Yeah, you know, again, it's just uh, getting the ball in bounds. They can run, they can still run the baseline got to get it in and, and look to attack. You either get a layup, or then if you don't have that layup as you break that full court pressure, you can then um, you know, pull it out, take 30 seconds. It's okay, because the, the clock is your friend right now with a minute 37 to go. So just uh, got to execute. More importantly, get the ball inbounds and not turn it over. If they get it across half court, the way that Radford is sending traps, do you try and basically take advantage of that by at a certain point late in the shot clock at the right time, taking it by surprise and going in with a numbers advantage? Yeah, yeah, you know, you get the ball to the middle of the floor, and then if you get the ball to the middle of the floor, you're gonna have a three on two situation from the top of the key in. So you really gotta look to attack and hit a little uh, hit a little jumper or get a layup. But first, they need to get it past half court. Nick Roberts, trouble again, gives it to Ward. Quick feed to O'Day in the middle in the backcourt. His pass is picked off by Noreen. Eight point game, Radford ball. Cross court feed, Anderson for three. Air ball short. Noreen tips it. Steidel has the offensive board and they foul him. So a costly, weak pass by O'Day right into the arms of Noreen. But Anderson had an, a contested three that went way short. Steidel with the clutch rebound. Yeah, Kurt uh, grabbing that rebound right there. Catamounts did a good job of breaking the pressure. Uh, O'Day tried to reverse the ball back to a guard. Noreen got his uh, ball, or hand on the ball, and Steidel will go to the line for two. Dyer is called for his third. Kurt Steidel, 82% this season, leads the team. One of the tops in the America East, he misses. Vermont had all sorts of issues late against Hofstra making free throws. The, the, the weird thing about UVM is they're the third best free throw shooting team in the America East, yet they've had weird spells it's just, it's at the line. It's just mental right now, no, no doubt about it. Steidel hits the second though, so Kurt has 11 and Vermont is back up by nine, a minute 20 to go, Davis. Crossover, pull up floater inside, got it. Timeout taken by Mike Jones 
Still a seven point game with a minute 14 to go in the Radford timeout. Now Radford has two timeouts to burn still and with their press, the way that they can create turnover so easily. Say it again here, it's definitely not a done deal. No, it's not, you know, a three possession game. And again, same thing, you gotta take care of the basketball, get it inbounds and be strong with it. You know, I mean, it, it, as crazy as it may sound, but taking a 30 second shot clock violation isn't a bad thing because you're gonna get, you know, with a minute and 14 to go, you know, you're gonna take care of a, a lot of time. So you gotta get the ball over, gotta be strong with the ball and hopefully you get something good. Again, I'd love to see them be able to break the pressure, go all the way to the rim and get a layup. They played last game in the 80s, Vermont did, against a high-paced Hofstra team. And then in this game, playing so far in the 70s, 73-66, not a surprise here either, but 30-second shot clock. And the Big South in general, plus obviously Radford, fast-paced. Big South is a really fast-paced conference. Yeah, and even the uh, Stony Brook game was in the 70s it's as well. True. There's been a few straight games. Plus the Albany game at the end of the regular season, too. Yeah. So got a four and five right there. So Ward gets it to Nick Roberts past half court. He is wrapped good. up by Anderson. It's a good smart play by Radford to put Nick Roberts at the line, who's not one of UVM's better foul shooters so far this season. 62%, not a ton of attempts. He was known in high school for being a clutch foul shooter. Hasn't really shown that so far this year, but Radford following the numbers there, fouling McRoberts. Yeah, and Cam Ward doing a nice job breaking that pressure, taking eight seconds off the floor. McRoberts coming to the ball, ball and going to the line for two. He misses the first. I mean, you have Wills on the court. Had him out with six, Yeah, 16 of 27 right now. Not making it easy on the faithful. They're right just now. was gonna say like with Wills, Ward, Nick Roberts. That's really three of five who have not been shooting it well in general this year or lately. And Nick Roberts misses both Radford ball. One minute to play. 73-66. Davis top of the key three ball. They just can't hit from deep. He misses and Wills has the rebound. That's the thing, Bernie. For all of Radford's success defensively and keeping this game alive. I mean they've just been brutal from outside. They're now. Three of 17. Right, for 17%. And on the season, you know, a 34% uh, three-point shooting team. They only made six per game. So, you know, definitely not uh, not one of their, uh, you know, one of their strengths. Again, forcing turnovers and, and creating havoc is, is you know, more the, the pillar that, that they built this on. So Price commits the foul against Wills in the backcourt. Two here for Wills. He is able to knock down the first. So much needed there for UVM to break up the struggles at the line. Wills now with 11. The other thing is, if you know you're not a great three-point shooting team, physical guards, aggressive guys, and maybe late in the game like this, just extending the game, still a minute to go, why not just get try and get the quick two? They're yeah. giving away some possessions by taking a lot of threes here. Maybe they don't need to quite yet. But the, you know the, the looks that they've had have been pretty open. You know, I thought that the one in the corner that was short was uh, was right on line as. Wills misses the second free throw. So one out of two, Radford ball still down by eight. Vermont is unable to put them away at the line. Anderson right wing to the top of the key. Green for three, he knocks it down. Not a surprise there. Green locked in, the senior looking to keep his career alive. Timeout, Mike Jones and Vermont has not closed this game well. It's now a five point game and now some confusion or some arguing here with Wills, the officials, and the head coach of Radford, Mike Jones. You see what happened there with Wills? I, I did not. I did not. I think uh, Dre and looks like Javante Green getting into a little bit of uh, friendly chatter. That is one of the least surprising things in the history of Patrick Jim, to see those two, two with some chatter. Two tremendous competitors who like to get after it, so yes. They're very similar players. 43.7 to go after the, the Radford timeout after the three ball by Green, who now has 22. And again, we're, we're now a two possession game with 43 seconds to go. So, you know, Catamount's got to take care of the basketball. Once again, and, and you know, again, the, the clock is the clock is their friend, but they got to be strong with the ball. They can't turn. They can't turn it over. Double bonus situation. Both teams. 
one timeout left for both teams. Possession arrow UVM, 43.7, 74-69 Vermont. Nick Roberts to trigger, inbound it to Hatton. He's trapped and then fouled in the Radford bench far sideline. Uh, Kyle Noreen, who's a little brother of former West Virginia four-year player and captain Kevin Noreen. West Virginia made some noise this weekend in the Sweet 16. Impressive win last night. Yes, Bob. Bob Huggins, one of the uh, one of the better characters as a head coach out there. That is a true statement. So Noreen's third, Hatton alive for two. Hatton rattles home the first. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Geico Catamount Radio Network. Brandon Hatton, 13 of 19 from the line this season, his second. He knocks down both his first two points of the game. Big ones for Brandon. And Vermont leads it 76 to 69 with 42.2 seconds to play. They go offense, defense, a smart move by Coach Becker to bring in Hatton for his foul shooting. He checks back out. Radford sprints up the court, uses some time here. 35 seconds to play. 12 second differential. Still no shot yet on the left side. Green drives in, hits the runner. Timeout, Mike Jones, 29 seconds to play. The 30 second shot clock is no longer, it's off. Still a five point game, 76-71. Vermont is not out of the woods in Burlington quite yet. Not at all, you know, the Catamounts, you know, again, got it, you know, one, one quick turnover and a, a layup or jumper, and uh, this game quickly becomes a one possession game. 29 seconds, Cats up five, same thing. Gotta be strong with the basketball, inbound it, don't turn it over. Get it over the half court line. You don't have to shoot again. So, you know, once you get it over half court, you just gotta be strong with it and get to the foul line and make some free throws. John Becker and his squad, UVM, searching for a 20 win season, which would be UVM's seventh in a row. Coach Becker has done such a great job Continuing to lead this team after the departure of Mike Lonergan for George Washington. Becker in his fourth year and kind of the opposite for Mike Jones, who's done a good job of just a rebuilding cast, the former VCU assistant. This Radford program was decimated after Brad Greenberg abruptly resigned a few years back. Brother of Seth Greenberg, the former Virginia Tech head coach, committed numerous recruiting violations and illegal benefits issues and had to depart after an NCAA investigation. He actually lied to the NCAA was the worst offense. He was given a five year show cause penalty by the NCAA. Well, he ended up fleeing the country in a way. Went to Israel, actually coached Josh Elbaum in the Maccabee games in 2013. There you go, Radford uh, with their second year in a row of 20 wins. Yeah, back-to-back 21 -back seasons already for Radford. Vermont searching here with 19 for its seventh in a row. Inbounds pass to Hatton against the press. Hatton is fouled. And he kind of was hit pretty hard and momentarily took exception to it. Poked across the eye, but then ended up high-fiving with, with Price. Yeah, I think he got, uh, I think he got as he went to try to make a steal, whacked him right across the mouth by accident. And uh, now Hatton just got to go to the line hit both of these because you want to make it a three possession game. Foul was on pricing and they made up after the momentary disagreement. Two for Hatton. Brandon Hatton clutches the line for UVM late. Three in a row, very important. 77-71, this is to make it a three possession contest with 28.4. Off the front rim, rebound Radford, 77-71. 20 seconds to play here in Patrick Jim. Step back three by Anderson, an air ball short. Rebound, Steidel. They look to tie him up, but can't. Foul called against Green. He fouls out. And what a great career for Javante Green. And his career likely coming to a close. 
Yes, and you know, again, 24 points, 15 rebounds, five steals, just left it all out there. Again, like we mentioned earlier, one of the better players we've ever uh, come into Patrick Jim this year. It was a pleasure seeing him in his final game, likely of his career, assuming Vermont can close it out here late. Uh, Green, and remember the, the Brian Vokel stat, the first player in NCAA history to have 1,000 rebounds and 600 assists? Green has a similar stat. The only player in Big South history with 1,800 points. He now has 1,900. He clips that in this game. The only player now with 1,900 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 200 steals in Big South history. Green fouls out after a great game and Steidle to the line to clinch the game. That's uh, tremendous, and hopefully uh, Kurt Steidle here again. Not over yet. Catamounts, still a two-possession game. Got to hit these free throws just to... Uh, Put the cherry on top of the Sunday. Get the Catamounts their seventh 21 season in a row. Steidel misses the front end. I mean, I, I don't like the fake cherry. It's like a real cherry top of the Sunday. Okay. I like them both. And the fake one isn't terrible. Yeah. I mean, come on. The real one's better. Steidel gives us the cherry. <laughs> Knocks it down. Seven-point lead. 17.5 to go. Radford ball right side, down by seven. Anderson, far baseline, penetration and kick. Three ball for Price, no good, it's short. Holcomb tips it, no. And Steidel gets another big rebound, lobs it up the court, and Vermont moves on to the semis of the CBI. Final score, 78-71. They dispatch the Highlanders here in Patrick Gym in the quarterfinals. Great win for the Catamounts. A very good Radford team that came in. Uh, just to get